So, could it be? Could it be that the, that the familiar, the expected, the, the conventional, no longer ceases to be? Could it be that, that our understanding of facts and falsehoods, of, of relationships and community break down? Could it be that, that our, our sites, these sites that have been seen as, as, as sacred and safe, that have been a, 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 a place of gathering for, for some and a place of hope for others, could it be that those sites turn into rubble on the ground? Could it be that our institutions, which have, have served us, which have protected us, which we have been able to count on, could it be that they fail us now? Could it be? Jesus has taken his disciples up to the top of the Mount of Olives, and, and they're looking out across the valley, and they, they see the great temple, the, the, the sacred site, a, a, a site that, that has not only been the gathering place for all that is spiritual, but it's also an economic place and also a testimony to, to the power of Herod's authority. They look at that temple, and Jesus says, that's coming down. And can't you imagine that the disciples are thinking, could it be? Let me give you a little context here. So, so we're in the home stretch of the Gospel of Mark. Jesus has made his entrance into Jerusalem for the very last time. He's been, he's been preparing his disciples for, for this moment, telling him, telling them that he's going to be betrayed, he's going to be arrested, he's going to be tortured, he's going to be put to death. There is no denying for them that being in Jerusalem is a place of immense danger for Jesus. And now he's talking about, about the destruction of the temple, the place that was so secure and seemed so solid, and, and they've got to be wondering, could it be? Clearly, Jesus senses their, their anxiety, their worries. Because he says to them in this gospel, don't be alarmed. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> don't? I am moved by how often Jesus says in the Gospels, do not be afraid or something like that. I, I don't think he's being dismissive of our fears, of our emotions. What I think is going on there is that he understands how infectious fear can be. He understands how when we are gripped by fear and anxiety, that it brings out the worst in us. That, that, that we go looking for safety or security, even certainty somewhere, anywhere. He understands how, how debilitating fear can be, which is why I think he says, do not be alarmed. He understands how desperate fear can make us, which is why he goes on to say, hey, don't, don't go chasing false prophets. Don't go looking for for security in all the wrong places. There have been false prophets before, and, and, and actually, after Jesus, the, the scholars say that there were somewhere in the neighborhood of 48 significant messianic claims. He, he knows what's coming, and so he says, do not be alarmed. Don't go chasing false Prophets. He 
These are anxious times in our country, are they not? We're wondering what might be, what could be, whether it be our, our institutions or our sacred sites. We've got, we've got fires, real fires on the West Coast and, and the East Coast. We've got, we've got, we've got conflicts on the hill and all over this country. And we're wondering what might be, what could be. Listen for Jesus to say, don't be alarmed. Listen for Jesus to say, don't go chasing security, certainty in false prophets. We've got choices here whether we're talking about our religious leaders or our civic leaders, we've got choices to make sure that, that we are following those whose voices align with Jesus' voice, to make sure that we are following voices who are, about, who are about unity, not division, voices who are about hope, not fear, voices who are about others, not self, voices who are about love, not hate, voices who bring light, not heat. We've got choices about who we follow. And we've also got choices about how to be. If we're going to follow this Jesus in more than just words, on more than just one hour, we've got choices about how to be. If we're going to remember who we are and whose we are, we've got choices about how to be. Because it's easy in this time when we're afraid to lose a sense of who we can be when we're our best selves. Uh, Brad Roth is a, a Mennonite pastor. He wrote this article in the Christian Century magazine, great, great magazine, if you've never heard of it before. And he wrote this. He wrote, our convictions don't lose their cogency in a bang or even a whimper, but in a little blah, blah, blah. Our conscience, he goes on to say, our conscience ghosts us. And we know something has changed. But what and who and where? Our truths shift in subtle ways. And we're not always aware of their scutter. In part, because we're just generally not aware. But it's also because it's not easy for the I to look at the me without justifying and making excuses. Who are we going to be? These are challenging times. These are anxious times. Who are we going to be? Now, let me say the quiet part out loud. And that is, as a white, straight, cisgendered male, I have the, the luxury, the privilege of fretting about the policies and laws that might come to be. I can fret. But there are so many others of our siblings who aren't fretting, but who are afraid, who have real existential fears. And let's be clear, fretting and fear, those are two different things. Let's be clear that, that you know, I can, I can choose to... Um, Go on a news embargo to bury my head in the sand because I just don't want to hear any more news. That's very different than having to hide out of safety. Let's be, let's be clear 
that, that wringing our hands and trembling are two very different things. So those of us of one sort of social context of privilege, I think, I think there's a question that I, I think there's a question that, that others of you of that privilege that, that, we, that, that we need to consider about what's our particular agency as we think about the months and the years to come. What's our agency? I think that, 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 that those of us of a particular social context and privilege need to say again or anew loud or louder to our black and brown and indigenous and AAPI siblings, this is a safe place. Your lives matter. I think that, that those of us of a certain privilege need to, to, to say to those whose lives began in another country and are now here looking for safety, looking for hope, welcome. And not just welcome, but Welcome home. I think that those of us of a certain social context and privilege need to say to our LGBTQ siblings, you are safe here. And not just safe, but beloved. We need to say that. We need to say that again and again, loud and louder. We need to say it, and we need to live into that too. We need to do more than just say words. We need to act in a way so that, so that those words become a truth, become a reality that no president, no policy, no practice can wipe away or deny. We need to act that way. Each of us has some agency. It varies depending upon social location, for sure. And I think some of the work we need to imagine moving forward in the weeks and months and years to come is, so what is, what is my agency? What is your agency? What is our agency? We can rebuild any temple that is destroyed. We can do that work. We who believe in the Jesus who spoke of a temple being, being torn down but also of a temple being raised up, we can participate in the building of that temple. Now we do it in a bunch of ways. One of the things I love about All Saints is how you do it through such activism, through such outreach. There's an action table every Sunday and I love that. And I also want you to imagine how we can do it individually as well. Each encounter at a time, personally, each of us. Look, if, 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 if I, if, if you, if one of a particular social location walks across the aisle or walks onto the lawn or walks across the street to greet someone of another social location, that puts a new stone for the temple. If, if an individual of one social location speaks to a, an individual of another social location and, and says, how are you? Tell me about your thoughts, tell me about your fears, tell me about your hopes, and oh, by the way, listens for the response, that puts another stone on the foundation. If an individual of one social location 
embraces an individual of another social location, embraces and says, I am here with you, that puts another stone on the foundation. If, it, if an individual of one social location not only stands alongside an individual from another social location, but actually goes to work with that individual, that puts another stone on the temple. Do you see? Oh, it's heavy lifting. It's a slow build. But it might be the only way that the foundation gets laid. If we're willing to speak across our social locations, if we're able to seek and serve Christ in all people, could it be? It's a heavy lift. But one way to manage our anxieties, our uncertainties, our questions is to link arm and arm and lift together. And if, and if those of one social location can, can be lifting with others of another social location and build those stones, then the temple can be built and, 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 and then one day we might not be talking about about different social locations, one day we might be talking about one sacred location which Jesus calls the kingdom of God. Could it be?